Thanks for watching the screencast. In this screencast, we're going to review learning targets 11, 12, and 13 in preparation for your mastery assessment. So you should follow along the problems that are on the handout that you picked up on the blue counter as you came in. Uh, what I think you should do is you should pause the video at the beginning of each screen. You should try the video, the items that go along with it, and then you should hit play to give yourself some feedback. The question here is, which of these relations are functions? and which ones are not. Go ahead and hit pause, try it, and then when you think you've got it worked out, hit play. I think only one of these is a function. I think the one that is a function is this one here. Because every x has only one y, and it's okay that 0 goes with 5, and 1 goes with 5, and 2 goes with 5, and 3 goes with 5, Every x, you know exactly where it goes. 0 goes to only 5, 1 goes only to 5, 2, and 3. By contrast, here's one that's not a function. This mapping. The issue is with negative 2. Negative 2 goes with both 3 and 4. So, if I ask you to explain why this is not a function, you could say something like, well, when x is negative 2, y is 3, or y is 4. This relation in a table is not a function. And the issue is that when x is negative 3, y actually has four different values. So this one is super duper not a function. Why is this graph not a function? It fails that vertical line test. If you pick one x value, this one for example, negative something, you can actually see that it crosses the graph not once, not twice, but three different places. So this one here fails the vertical line test. It's not a function either. Here's an old problem now. Here are two functions given by their rules, f and g. Find f of negative 3 and find g of negative 2. Hit pause and try it. To find f of negative 3, we need to use the rule for function f. And everywhere we see x, we need to replace x with negative 3. So 4 times x is 4 times negative 3, plus x squared. x squared is negative 3 squared. Now all you need to do on the right-hand side is to do order of operations. So the first thing I should do here is I should square my negative 3. I've got 4 times negative 3 plus, what is negative 3 squared? Yeah, it's positive 9. Next I should multiply. 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. And negative 12 plus 9 is negative 3. So f of negative 3 equals negative 3. To find g of negative 2, I need to use the rule for function g. And everywhere I see x, I need to replace it with negative 2. So g of negative 2 is negative 3 times x, negative 3 times negative 2, plus 7. Negative 3 times negative 2 is positive 6. And now I can add 6 and 7 to get 13. G of negative 2 is 13. Okay, here is a function graph problem that goes with learning target 12. Go ahead and hit pause and see if you can answer these three questions about the graph here that shows the number of calories you burn after swimming this many hours. Let's take a look at A. Which of these variables is the independent variable? Well, it's, it's time. The independent variable is time. Time in hours. If one of your two quantities is time, it is almost always the independent variable. Which one is the dependent variable? 
It's the number of calories burned. The number of calories burned. In a scenario where you're swimming for a number of hours, it's how long you've been swimming that controls how many calories you burn. B says approximately how many calories can be burned by swimming for three hours. Three hours is x equals three. Right here. Now to me, that looks like it's just a little bit more than 1,200. But if you said that was exactly 1,200, I would buy it. I'm going to say that's not even halfway, which would be 1,400. I'm going to say it's something like about 1,250 calories. If you said 1,200, we would take it. If you said 1,300, we would take it. You have a ballpark and be able to defend your answer. Explain that you saw a point on the graph that answered the question. Now C says, if you want to burn 2,000 calories by swimming, or in other words, if Y is 2,000, about how many hours will you need to swim? So we're talking about 2,000 calories. It's right about there, isn't it? I really think the best answer here is somewhere between 4 and 5. What would you guess? It's, it, to me, it even looks like it's a little bit more than 4.5. Maybe 4.75 hours? Would we accept 4.5? We absolutely would. Something that shows that you know where to look on the graph and make sure you can justify it. Talk about the point you saw on the graph that answered the question. Okay, finally, let's talk about some slopes. If you need to see it one more time, the slope formula, so that the slope is either change in y over change in x, change in y over change in x, or, especially in the second example, you might want to think about it being the rise over the run. See if you can find the slope of each of these linear functions. Hit pause and try it. Let's take a look at the table example. Is there a delta x pattern in this table? It looks to me like you can add 2 to get from 0 to 2, and from 2 to 4, and 4 to 6, and 6 to 8. Looks to me like delta x is 2. What's the change in y pattern? Looks like plus 8 to me. So what's the slope? Well, it's delta y, 8, positive 8, over delta x, positive 2. If I divide two positive numbers, I get a positive result, and 8 divided by 2 is 4. The slope is 4. The second example is a graph. So using a graph, I like to think about rise over run. And I like to start at the leftmost point and think about going down in this case, or up if I needed to, and then right. So, how far down did I go? What was my rise? Looks like negative 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Negative 4. And then once I went down 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? Plus 5. So here my slope is rise, negative 4, over run. The run. Now to simplify this, a negative thing divided by a positive thing is a negative thing, and four-fifths does not reduce. There's nothing that goes into four and five other than one, so it's just four-fifths.
Let's do one more slope problem in this video. And for this one, I'll give you two points on the graph of a linear function and ask you to find the slope. Hit pause, try it, and then hit play. I find it really helpful when given two points to make a very short table. And it works out like the first example on the last screen. So let me put these two ordered pairs in the table like rows, negative nine comma four, and three comma negative four. And now let me think about what delta x would be. What could I do to negative nine to get three? I could add 12. What can I do to four to get negative four? I need to count backwards. I need to subtract eight. And if I can find delta x and delta y, then the slope is delta y negative 8 over delta x positive 12. If I divide a negative number by a positive number, I get a negative result, and 8 twelfths reduces. I know that 4 divides into both 8 and 12, so let me do that. 8 divided by 4 is 2, 12 divided by 4 is 3, the slope should be negative 2 thirds. Thanks for watching. Good luck on the mastery assessment.